All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about paint techniques uh, that we use to create textures and um, patterns and designs uh, on our sets. So that way, you know, we don't actually have to go out and buy bricks or, uh, you know, specific type of textures. Um, we can sort of mimic that using paint. So I'm going to show you some of those techniques. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is called spattering. And spattering basically is kind of what it sounds like. It is uh, making little dots and speckles. So if we if we have like a sort of a rock texture um, that is you know full of those little those little dots and specks or, and and points, um, we'll use that. So the the best way to do this is to get some paint um, that is thinned a little bit with water, and you can use a paintbrush, and you'll dip it in there a little bit, and you'll give you know, light flicks like this with your brush and it will create those spots. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do it here, but I'll show you some examples uh, in this video of um, some spattering uh, techniques. Another way to do it is also to get a, some of that uh, water paint mixture and get a spray bottle and spray it like that. So that's another sort of a lot easier way um, to do that. So that's spattering. So we're spattering, splattering. It's kind of, that's the easy way to remember it. The next paint technique I'm going to teach you guys about is called stippling. Now, stippling is the process of using either a sponge. You can also use a rag. Sometimes you can use um, like a feather duster. Um, and you're going to dip it into the paint. Then you will sort of stamp it um, in a nondescript pattern to sort of create that texture. And I'll show you what I mean. So I have, I have my sponge here. Um, it's not a perfectly square sponge. I have sort of this rough side I want to use. I want to use this, uh, this is sort of nondescript um, funky texture and I might even you know kind of squish it a little bit so I get a real um, you know rough looking uh, shape on one side. So I'm gonna dip it in my paint a little bit. I'm going to, let's see, get a little bit more on there. There we go. I'm gonna stamp it out a little bit so it's not as um, not as wet and drippy. Um, sort of get some of that off of there. We just want sort of the paint that's on there. We don't need to, we don't want big blobs of paint on there, okay? So now I am going to stamp. Now I'm gonna make sure I don't stamp the same direction every time. I'm gonna make sure that I'm kind of turning and doing different parts of the stamp, different directions. That way I get a less uniformed pattern and I get more of a, a randomness is what I'm looking for. So this is good for a rock texture, brick texture. We use this all the time. Um, so it's going to go a little something like this. So I'm going to stamp like this. I'm going to get kind of, again, like I said, different angles, different directions as I'm stamping. You know, no stamp, no two stamps are exactly the same, right? Get this going here. Okay. And there I go. So with this texture right here, as you can see, it's very nondescript. Um, we can even get a little bit closer here. I can show you. Very nondescript pattern that we've got going on there. Now, if I do that all over this piece, this piece will definitely look, and maybe if I have some color underneath it, or I use another color on top of this and do the same thing, I will have a, a really great, interesting, different texture that I can use um, to make bricks. So I can paint, you know, grout lines over this and then it will look like bricks. Or if I have stones, I make sure that I make each stone look like this too. Okay. So this gives us, this is, um, stippling and it gives us a really nice texture. The next paint technique I'm going to tell you guys about is stamping. Now stamping is very close to stippling, except where stippling, we wanted a less uniformed look stamping. We want a uniformed look. We want whatever the stamp, whatever the shape is, we want that put onto our piece, right? So I'm going to do is I'm going to get, we're going to make bricks right now, okay? So I'm going to get my, my sponge. I am going to have a square sponge this time around, okay? And this will be my brick shape. Now, I like to use the sponge too because it has those holes in there, right? So it'll still give us a little bit of that texture that we want. Um, but I'm using it as a stamp rather than stippling all around, right? So I'm going to dip it in here. You got to cover the whole side. Make sure you get that though. Just kind of hard to do if it's real dry. Okay, that's good enough. Now I'm gonna 
stamp some of this out on my tray here. So it's not too much. Okay, now I'm going to be able to start doing bricks. This is where I would, I would follow a line of sorts. Now my sponge is a little dry, but you get the idea. Once, if it was a little more wet, I could get fill in that little spot there. But now I'm going to use my stamp. I'm going to keep going, uniformed along. Now if I'm going to do bricks, right, they're alternating like this. Eventually I will need to reapply some paint so that I have more paint so this all looks a little bit better. But that's stamping. So stamping isn't just bricks, right? You can have any sort of other pattern, any sort of other shape that you're stamping on. And that you're literally doing just that, using a stamp. So stamping. The next technique I want to tell you about is stenciling. And this one's pretty simple. You just use a stencil, right? Um, I don't have any stencils to show you, but I will show you some examples in the video. Um, but we use this all the time, whether we're doing some sort of wallpaper pattern or um, brick, specific brick rock pattern. We've done that in the past too. Um, using the stencil, you just put the, lay the stencil down, you paint over the stencil, very carefully remove the stencil, and there you go. You have your stencil pattern on the wood. The next technique I'm going to show you guys is dry brushing. Now, dry brushing we use to make sort of a wood grain texture. Um, that is mostly what we use it for. Uh, we pretty much use it um, all the time where we're making, we want to make something look like old wood, right? We'll paint something a certain color, then we'll take a darker color over it and make the streaks of wood grain. Now, if you're going to look at this piece of wood, it's already got wood grain on it, right? Well, let's say, you know, this isn't exactly what we want it to look like. We want it to be maybe a dark red kind of wood or a darker brown kind of wood. Uh, and instead of buying, going out and buying that kind of wood, we can do that with dry brushing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my paint and I'm going to get one of these bigger brushes like this, okay? Um, when I use this brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some paint on it. Now it's called dry brushing because you're going to use the least amount of paint as possible to do this. So I'm going to scrape my brush as dry as I can get it. Scrape all the excess paint off of it so that what is left is only the residual paint that's left on this paintbrush. And that's why it's called dry brushing because you're, using, you're basically using a dry brush. But of course I didn't get all of the paint off, right? There's still a little bit on there. So when I very lightly drag this across, it's going to leave these streaks like this. And I'll get this a little up close so you can see it. So using this technique of using this dry brush like this, going very slowly and carefully, making this wood grain, grain texture with the brush, I can get this texture. Um, that I want. So let me give you guys a little closer up look at that. So here's your closer up look at this dry brush. As you can see, I just barely, you know, put streaks on the board uh, with the littlest amount of paint possible. And I have some really nice textured lines there that can be used for some wood grain lines. So that's dry brushing. The last paint technique I want to show you guys is called scumbling. Now, scumbling has another name. We call it wet on wet uh, or blending, right, of the paint. Uh, but its technical name is scumbling. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two colors, and I'm going to sort of blend these colors together. Now, the trick is usually when we paint with two colors and we paint something and then we paint over it, we wait for the first coat to dry, right? Well, when you're doing scumbling, you want that blend of color to happen. So we're not going to wait for the first color to dry before we then go over it with the second color. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to start out with this blue that we've been using this whole time, this darker blue. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to paint you know, a little section here. Right? Get this blue on here started. OK. Now, before this dries, I'm going to get my other color. Now I have a lighter blue here. It looks really nice if you use two of the same color, but you can you can blend other colors as well. It doesn't that is not dependent on specific colors this technique. So, 
I got my light blue, and I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to blend it this way. I want it to go this way. So I'm going to start over here, put this down because I want this color here. Then I'm going to come into this dark blue like this. And as you can see, it's starting to blend. You're getting a little bit of a gradient color, and I'll give you guys a closer look here in a second. But if I got my gradient color like this, I'm blending from one color. I want to make sure I do this right, one color to the next. I want to make sure I don't mix too much over here. So if I, I got a little of that darker paint over there, I'm going to get some of this blue paint. And usually, you know, we'll pour paint into actual little containers rather than just getting it straight from the bucket. Uh, that way we don't mess up our paint supply. But um, so we're starting here with this light blue, and it's going to blend into the wet of this dark blue. Now, I have a little bit more light blue than I want, so what I can definitely do is come back over here with the dark blue, okay, and do a little blending and make sure I get, I get this blend um, as perfect as I want it, okay? So I'm going to start over here again with the dark blue, sort of blend a little into this light blue, okay? And so that's scumbling as I'm going across uh, from one to the other. Now you can do this. This doesn't just have to be like sort of a, a gradient always, like from one to the other. It can just be a, a sort of, um, you know, amoebus sort of mixture of these two colors together uh, where it, it's, it's sort of changing shades all over the place, not just from one side to the other, okay? So that's why we, that's what we do with scumbling. So let me get you guys a closer look at this so you can actually see um, the gradient change. So as you can see, I have a nice, nice shift in color from the dark over to the light. And that is wet on wet blending or scumbling. So those are all of our paint techniques. Um, the easiest way, they're, they're kind of hard to remember because they all start with S, except for dry brushing, but they all start with S. So you just got to remember some of them, what they are, right? So we got dry brushing, we've got stamping, that's pretty easy to remember, it's a stamp. You've got stenciling, it's pretty easy because you use a stencil. You have spattering, which is, remember, you spatter is, and splatter can rhyme. And then you also have uh, stippling here, so this is the stippling. Only way I remember it is, you know, when you do makeup, costume, uh, you know, like theater makeup, you use what's called a stippling brush if you do like, you know, five o'clock shadow. It's called a stippling brush. So I just remember stippling sponge, same kind of deal. So stippling is using that sponge or rag or feather duster to make those different sort of uh, uh, unorganized pattern. Uh, and then scumbling down here, oops, wrong way. <laughs> And scumbling down here is that wet on wet blend is scumbling. So those are all the paint techniques and we use those all the time to sort of make um, all these different textures and make things look realistic on the stage.